I have this voice in my head that's saying, use the fourth, John, use the fourth. When I got my machine, it came with a Haas fourth axis, but the fourth axis did not come with any work holding. And so in the two years I've had it, I've never used the fourth axis. I finally gotten around to setting up the fourth axis, and that's what I'll be showing this episode, which is starting with work holding. Uh, I looked out there for other solutions. There are definitely other solutions out there. The cheapest one was about $700, I think, maybe $650, somewhere in that range. I'm sure it's really good. Uh, but I don't really know how to use a fourth. I don't know what I'm going to use it. I don't know how often I'm going to use it. So I decided to, to start with something cheap, uh, do some work myself, see that, how that goes. And then once I have that experience, I'll have a better idea of what I want to do next. So the starting point is a self-centering vice that I've seen some other people use. Let's take a look. I bought this self-centering vice that I hope will work well for the fourth axis. This is designed for EDM machines. Uh, I believe it's, you have different backings on here that you can uh, mount to different EDM machines. And then the electrode I think is held in here. Not really sure, but I know other people have used this. And so you just use a hex wrench. And uh, the nice thing about this is that I can set the, uh, the zero point to right in the center here for the, the X and the, sorry, the Y and the Z, and then the stock should be centered within that. To be able to mount this to my Haas though, I need to create an adapter plate. So I have this piece of leftover aluminum that is about four by four inches and one inch thick. That is the perfect size to be able to make a face adapter. So the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, put this in the mill and cut to one side and then the other side. And then I'm going to mount this to here and try the fourth axis for the first time. Before I mill the, uh, the part out, I 3D printed something that allows me to check this. And uh, I can see that the holes line up. You can see these holes here. Um, so that's going to be perfect. I start by picking up the left back side of the part and I'm using the parallels or I should say the piranha, piranha jaws as the Z0. Then a simple facing operation and then after this it's a very long adaptive clearing to uh, carve away most of the material and leave behind a fairly close to circular shape. Next, we have the 2D contour to clean up the outside edges of the fixture. This doesn't have to be this clean, but why not? It's nice to have it look nice. There are six holes in the front of the adapter. We'll have socket head cap screws that hold the adapter onto the fourth axis itself. So these need to be spotted and then drilled and then bored to size for the screws for clearance as well as for the screw heads so that they will be below the surface of the front. And then a chamfer of all the edges to make it look nicer and to get rid of any burrs of course. I have two operations on the back side. The first operation, which you're seeing here, is to remove the hat. And then as we get in further, it's going to create the alignment boss that will align this adapter to a precision hole in the fourth axis.
With the hat melt away, I want to pick up a more precise uh, X0 and Y0 position on two flat surfaces that are left in the part. I decided to use a spiral tool toolpath to give it a nice finish, but I forgot to set it to start from the outside instead of from the inside. And then the 2D contour to set the finish dimension. I turned on cutter compensation, but it turned out not to need it because it came out perfect. There are four screw holes that will have screws coming from the back to hold the vise in place on this adapter. Okay, let's see how it uh, fits. There is, I can't feel any play at all in this. So that's a, a perfect fit. So now what I need to do is mount this to the other side. And it only goes on one way, which is this way, so that I can get to all six of those screws. So I will put it on like so. and see how it fits. Okay, um, and one of the things I was curious about, which I've just checked, is that I can get these screws in and out uh, while this is mounted. But the one thing I'm noticing is that there's a lot of uh, play in here. So I'm going to change things a little bit. There are some holes in here which look like they're good locating holes. And so what I'm going to do is uh, mill away this beautiful finish to have a couple alignment pins. One is going to be circular, that's going to be in the aluminum, and the other will be Non-circular, it'll have two contact points so it's not over-constrained. Uh, basically, I want this to be rotationally constrained uh, so that it can rotate around this one. And then here, I only want it to be constrained in this direction so that um, it won't bind in this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change, uh, do some more milling, and then the other thing that I noticed, uh, which I forgot to, to mention, is that the screws are uh, not flush and that's because I def defined the depth of these um, the head pockets before I decided to mill this part out here. So if I had not milled down as you see here these would have been deep enough. So I need to do two things. One is I need to make these screw pockets deeper and then the other thing is let me check with here yeah, I think I'm going to make these screw pockets a little bit deeper as well, and then mill in the locating features. Okay, I have it finished. Um, looks good, right? 
except for that one thing where I uh, made a mistake. I forgot to set the uh, the Z offset correctly uh, because I, I switched parallels and uh, was using the wrong offset on G55. Uh, so plunge the end mill into there, but it'll work fine even though it hurts my pride. Uh, what I have here are the two alignment points. So this is round, which allows the this to pivot. And then this is a diamond shape where the size is just right in this direction and slightly smaller in this direction. And that prevents it from being over constrained. And so that what that means is when I put it on here, uh, it fits perfectly and there's no wiggle. So what I'll do now is go ahead and put the screws in to hold it in place. And then we can uh, mount it on the fourth axis. What I'm going to do is um, mount it, I want it, uh, I think, this way um, so that I can have access to this to put the stock in place. Oops. Okay, I didn't see that coming. Let's see if I can get the screws in when this is not uh, on here. Okay, so I'm going to have to take this off, put these two screws in, and then put it back on again. All right, I uh, put the two screws in, uh, which are now captured, because the tolerances are a little tighter than I thought they would be. So now I can put this back in here. And I can see I'm going to need to uh, move my vise over a little bit because I don't quite have as much room as I'd like in here. This is a simple part I put together so that I could test the motion of the milling for the fourth axis. I don't plan to actually mill this part because it has no value to me. What I did is initially set up a point here that I can use for the coordinate system for this setup. So this is going to be the zero point and I have it in the middle here because I want it to be at the center of the axis of rotation. The first operation is fairly conventional. You can see it's just coming down from Z. You can see that Z is pointing straight up here. Now notice that the next one, Z changed, so it's now pointing up this way, and for the final one, Z is pointing that way. And the way that I did this, and I had to watch some videos to figure this out, is by using the tool orientation, and then setting this edge to be the Z axis, uh, etc. And that tells it effectively that it needs to rotate it, so that the Z is this way. So it's a pretty cool feature just by using tool orientation. You can get it to do rotations, stop, and then do milling in that rotation. So let's post this and give it a try. I've set up the, uh, this is the A0 position. And then I set up the X and Y0 positions to be out here. So I should be air cutting. But what I'm going to do is, is put a piece of aluminum in here, just as a reference, so you can get an idea of what it's doing. And what it should do is it should cut two holes here, over there of course, two holes here, and then one hole there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, press cycle start. I'm going to do 50% at first. You can see it's now rotating to do that side. And then it's going to rotate 180 degrees to do the other side. So that shows that I have the uh, rotary axis working, the fourth axis. 
Now what I need to do is uh, work on a part that can take advantage of that, which I'm going to do next time. I'm pretty pleased how this turned out, at least as far as I've gotten. There are still quite a few things I need to learn, and that's what I'm going to be doing in the next episode, which is setting up an actual part and then trying it out to see how well it works and to see the types of things that I can do with it. And so, for example, I'm going to need to uh, pick up the, uh, the Y and the Z position accurately and uh, put the part in, program it, see what happens. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe, and if you're already a subscriber, you may want to click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to ensure that you're notified when I have another video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.